Megan, take three, stop sticks. He put it on my heart to move to Nashville. And then the first night, he's like, I'm not even going to mess around. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you your two best friends right here. These are going to be your sisters for life. And, and I mean, if that's not God, I don't know what is. <laughs> well, I was born and raised in Bowmanville, Ontario, in Canada. It's a small town about an hour east of Toronto. And then I went right into being a competitive snowboarder. And that was my really big dream. Alongside that, I had developed this passion for music. My senior year of high school, I went off a jump and I had a really bad fall. I broke my back, snapped my collarbone, dislocated my shoulder, broken ribs, severe concussion. It truly is a miracle that I was able to walk after that. But I really turned to music during that recovery and I kind of had a new dream. That eventually led me through a few different bands until I became solo artist Megan Patrick. When I was in my mid-20s, uh, I got into a very abusive relationship with my boyfriend at the time. It started as just emotional abuse and led to physical abuse. And um, I know that I used to be the girl who I said, oh, I'll never be that girl. I would never stay with a guy that, that abused me. I'm sorry. When you're in it, that person has taken a lot of time to make you feel like you've somehow done something to deserve it. And it was the loneliest time in my life. And I remember one night I was in my room and I hated myself and I hated where I was in my life. And I thought, well, some people pray. So maybe I could try that. I had no idea what I was doing. You know, the only thing I knew about God or religion or praying was just what I'd seen in movies. And I felt so silly at first, like, what are you doing? Who are you talking to? There's nobody there. Nobody's coming to save you. But I just kept doing it because I didn't know what else to do. And I prayed to God and I said, God, maybe it's too late for me. Maybe. I'm not worth your love. Maybe I'm too far gone. But God, I just want to feel safe again. I want to get out of here. Just help me do that. I still had so many questions and I didn't really know what I was doing, but I did find a little bit of comfort in the idea that just maybe he was listening, that maybe I could be okay. All this time, I thought that my relationship with God started just when I acknowledged him. But when I look back on my life, I can see so many times that he was there protecting me, and I didn't know that's what it was. I mean, I think about the people that did actually look out for me and protect me when I was trying to leave that abusive relationship. And one of those people was the police officer that responded to my call. I remember he came over to my parents' house and I was sitting in the kitchen with my, my parents there talking to him. He was asking me questions. And he asked me and he said, has he ever been physically abusive to you? And I kind of looked over at my parents and they looked at me and I just said no. And um, the police officer kind of looked at me and said, okay, well, I think that's all for now. He said, do you mind walking me out? And so I walked out with him and he turned and he looked at me and he said, I, I don't want to try and scare you, but you should be scared. This guy, I already know who he is and I need you to understand that it's not going to stop until you do something about it, until you give him a reason to stop. And I didn't, I didn't want anybody else to know how pathetic I felt in that moment. 
But when that police officer spoke to me, I could see it in his eyes just how serious he was. And I could feel it in my gut. I knew that he was right. So I did. I walked into the police station the next day. I gave my statement and uh, he was arrested. And that police officer, when I look back on that, I know that God sent him because that was such a turning point in my life. I really felt like I needed a fresh start. And I'd been praying and saying, God, like I still, I'm not where I need to be. And he just put it on my heart that I, need, I needed to go. I needed to move to Nashville. The first night I was there, I went to Basement East. And so this girl, Casey Tyndall, she was an artist and we'd followed each other on social media. And I'm standing there in line to go into Basement East and I hear Megan Patrick. I turn around and she's like, hey, it's me, Casey Tyndall. What are you doing here? I thought you lived in Canada. <laughs> and um, so we start talking and she's like, well, you need, you need to meet my roommate, Lainey. Like, you're like a real country girl and you, you, would, you would get along great with us. You need to come out to the house. And so I feel like we, we became really close very quickly. And, you know, it was the first time I'd ever really been around people that were very open about their faith. And at first I felt kind of weird about it because I felt like, I almost felt like a fraud. It's like, well, I've never really gone to church. I haven't been baptized. This is just this kind of like new thing I've been doing by myself in my bedroom and not telling anybody about it. And, um, you know, I almost felt like, like kind of ashamed or like I didn't want to tell them like, like I would be judged or something. And um, I finally just kind of told them my story and we had many, many, conversations over Lainey's kitchen table about God and about faith. And, you know, they never judged me for the questions or the doubts that I had. And that led me to write a song called Praying Right. And it was just kind of me asking my questions, you know, how I felt the first time I got down on my knees and, and prayed, you know, is it too late to talk to you? Are you even listening? Am I worthy of your love. I mean, everybody that was supposed to love me had made me feel like I was unlovable. And so I wrote this song and and I was playing this writer's round uh, down in Demumbrian. And I tell my story for the first time ever in public about, you know, I, I give my, my testimony and I tell everyone, you know, how I came to write this song. And when I introduced it, I said, I want to, you know, thank my friends Casey and Lainey. They really inspired me to have the courage to write this song. My friend called me Sunday and asked me if I wanted to go. Pardon me, wanted to, and pardon me, didn't know. Can I wear my boots and jeans? Will everybody stare at me like they know how long it's been? I've got questions, cause I've been treating my soul like an old rundown shack. All my demons live rent free on my back. So when I walk in with all my sins I know I won't blend in But can you forgive me? I've got questions Can I sing Amazing Grace With last night's whiskey on my breath? Do I deserve your love With a little bit of faith I've got things am I getting through is it too late to turn to you I'm trying Lord I'm trying to find the light tell me am I praying right I got through the first verse and finished the first chorus and it was just like you could hear a pin dropping in the room 
And then everybody started clapping and cheering. I look over to my left, and there's Casey and Lainey standing there with tears streaming down their faces. And I didn't even know, they, they had walked in right as I was introducing the song. I didn't even know they were there. And so I go over there and they're crying and they're like, oh my gosh, that's the best song you've ever written. Like, when did you write this? This is amazing. And I was like, what are you guys doing here? And they were just like, well, and we were killing some time and our friend Jenna said, oh, Megan's playing at Tin Roof. Let's go check it out. And I mean, they literally walked in the bar right as I was about to play this song. And, and I mean, if that's not God, I don't know what is. <laughs> I finally, I got to a place where I felt like I was I was ready to make this this proclamation this this commitment to to God and, and living for God and I think part of that came from after I got married um, you know standing up there and saying my vows and I thought well I want I want to do that for God I, I want to do that for for Jesus I want them to know that I'm I'm with them and I'm in it. <laughs> So actually, I'd never been baptized, and I really wanted to when I felt like the time was right, because it was something that I took really seriously. And so I said, I'm ready. <laughs> and I was baptized in the river, and it was, it was the easiest decision I ever made, and it was one of the most powerful and beautiful moments of my life. My name is Megan Patrick, and I am second.